Hello guys, uh, it's Chris, and in today's episode of Sample Market Producer Tips and Tricks, we're going to have a look at what is the follow action, which is a, a specific Ableton feature. Follow action is a feature that allows you to automate the triggering of the clips in session view, and it allows you to create non-linear evolving arrangements by defining specific behaviors of the clips selected. Let's uh, take this as a starting loop, which is coming from the previous tutorials that I've shown on the Sample Market channel. So let's add a bit of uh, chances to this so they're not happening too often. I would like to resample this texture that I've created. This is the extra breakbeat layer that I've generated uh, in the previous tutorial uh, to use it um, between the main drum loop and the pad and the synth lines. I would like to record this and use the follow actions in order to generate different kind of variations of the selected clip. So let's record this one. Let's select the input, of course. I will uh, duplicate the clip, let's say, um, eight times uh, for now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this arrow here and enable the follow action function. So here we have um, a possibility to select where we want the audio to go next, basically, which uh, clip we want to trigger next. We can play again the following clip, um, the selected clip, go to the previous one, next one, first, last. And what I would like to do usually is to have the any option. So it can be very random. Here we have the linked function, which means that like this, the whole clip will play and then it will clip another one. Uh, obviously, depending on which behavior of the clip we have selected here. Usually, I like to use it as unlinked and decide myself the length of the clips that I would like to work with. And it's very important to use the legato function because if not, the clip will just start again and again from the starting point. Let's see how it is working for now. Oh, I've just selected only the first one. So let's select them all, unlinked. Let's use maybe one, three, and legato. And let's see. Now, jumping one from the other, what we can do is that we can affect the single clip in order to have a kind of different modulation from the, the other one. If I want to have one untouched and I leave one scene gap, this one will not be triggered. 
the follow actions to work, they have to be one next to the other. So what I can do now is I can add some effects to my liking. Let's add a phaser, for example. Then I would like to add an auto filter, an auto pan as gate, obviously. Maybe a delay, why not? And a bit repeater, yeah. There's no harm in using another bit repeater, right? Insert function, as we've seen in the previous tutorial. Uh, let's choose another offset. And uh, let's see which other effect we can use. The pedal, I think, could be nice to use at some point. And maybe a limited at the end. Now, obviously, I'm not going to play all the effects all together. Uh, if not, I will blow up the entire universe. But what I will do is I will just record the uh, automations while the follow action feature is going on. So this will allow me to jump the automation itself from one clip to the other. And having the, the random function uh, enabled, then also when I'm going to repeat the, um, the audio once again, the automations will not replay as previously recorded, which is something very interesting. So let's do this. Let's automate. Maybe let's have it uh, jump with a shorter time. Let's do even three. Yeah, why not for recording purposes, I think it's pretty good. Now let's use the auto filter. Let's automate some parameters of the auto filter. So you got the idea. And then I would repeat this um, onto all the other effects. I'm going to use this as a gate. Automate some functions of the delay as well. Let's automate once again the dry wet, which is the most important thing. Then we can automate a beat repeat.
So now we have a bunch of uh, audio clips that have uh, some automations uh, of the values of the effects selected here. You can also group some of them and use them in a chain or as you prefer. In this case, I've used them in parallel. And here I have my untouched clip. And another way to affect this is to, to create some variations uh, is to work on the audio itself with the warping function. So I can, for example, repitch some of this. Let's see how it's sounding like this. Then I can maybe use the texture function, which is really interesting. Some reverse, why not? Some decay with the transient warping function. And let's hear how they are sounding uh, like this. Now I'm just going to reproduce only the ones that have been edited with the warping function. As you can see, there's no effect happening here. Is steady as the last one that we have left here. So if I select this one, assign another color to them and bring them together with this, now we're gonna have a very unique kind of texture. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to record audio, the whole result. So I'm going to select this, press record. So you got the idea of where we're heading with this. Yeah, basically I would record a very long stem and now we have generated a pretty unique texture. So we went from this which is a very specific kind of drum pattern to this. I usually I will add a sooth to this uh, to control a bit the um, frequencies and also add a limiter in order to control the peaks because there can be some arch results. And also I will open the utility. Uh, if you're doing this, please be sure to control the stereo field because for example, with the gate, we have opened the phase quite a bit, so that is gonna affect the stereo field quite a lot and it may cause some phase issues. Let's put the bass mono as well. And now we have this. is a pretty unique result starting from this. This obviously is a bit more abstract and is it could be nice to use kind of both this maybe in the intro or for more texture purposes and then this dry one maybe in the uh, main part of the track.
that is really up to you. But I believe that this technique could be really useful in order to generate textures. Now we use it on a drum loop and we wanted to keep it as an extra layer, but it really can be applied to anything and uh, depending on what you want to achieve. I think this result is pretty nice and I'm definitely going to use it for sure. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and I hope to see you into the next one. Cheers, guys.